Hello my dear friends, welcome to Java programming playlist. In this video, we are going to see the concept of threads in Java programming. My dear friends, threads we all know are the parallel code that is executed in the system. So in Java, we can create a thread and that will run in parallel to the main program. Let us start introducing the threads. Multiprocessing and multithreading both are used to achieve multitasking in a system. So if we want to have a system which can do multiple tasks in parallel or at the same time, then we go with the multiprocessing or multithreading. Here is the diagrammatic representation. The first half is actually a multiprocessing system where we have multiple processes like process 1, process 2 or process 3 running in parallel and they are executed one after another in a some pattern. The second part shows that there is a process and in that process there are multiple threads. So these threads are again executed in parallel and they can perform some independent task. In a nutshell, threads are using a shared memory area. The processes when we are talking about multiprocessing environment, then this process 1 is having its own memory area where it stores the data which are used at the runtime. Same is applied with the process 2 and also with the process 3. While in the case of threads, the process 1 there is some memory area which is allotted to process and threads which are inside the process running in parallel uses the same memory area in a shared manner. Threads equal to faster content switching. So threads are again used for faster content switching. Thread is a lightweight where a process is a heavyweight. So we can see when we are talking about a process switching then it takes a some amount of computation where the system first stores that information about process 1 at some place and it loads the information about process 2 and then the process 2 is given the execution cycle. Whereas in the case of threads it uh, since they are using the shared memory, we don't have to do all this activity of switching the memory area, whereas just threads are switched, they are using the same memory area. Hence, they are called lightweight, whereas the processes are called heavyweight. For example, a word processor can have one thread running in foreground as an editor and another in background auto saving the document. So for a word processor the example that we have taken here it says that there is a word processor in that there are multiple threads. First thread is running in the foreground that we can see as an editor where we can write the content. There is another thread which is running in the background auto saving the document so that you don't lose the document if something wrong happens with the system at that time. Here is the flow control in the Java for threads. So first we are looking at the system without threading. So you have a main function then in main function you call the function 1. In function 1 you call the function 2 and then the control is returned back to the main and the process ends. But with threading, here there is a main function which calls up the function 1. But function 1 and main function they both run in parallel. In function 1 we are calling the function 2. So function 1, function 2 and the main function now all this 3 runs in the parallel and the process ends when all the three functions whether this main function the function 1 or function 2 
all the three functions are ended at the some single point only at that case the main process ends to create thread in java program there are two ways first is by extending the thread class and second is by implementing the runnable interface now both this way are having their own advantage and disadvantage that we will see with an example so first we are looking at the extending thread class in java so to create a thread using a thread class we need to extend the thread class java's multi threading system is based on the thread class so all the class which are in extending the thread class will then be having the capability of implementing the multi threading because thread class is supporting that here is the syntax so we have a class named my thread which extends thread now this thread class is an abstract class where it has one abstract method that is called run the syntax of that run is public void run now because this function does not return anything it is having the return type as void and it is having the access modifier as public because this run will not be called as a regular function on the other hand it is called by some other way so it has to be public because we are calling this run indirectly from outside this class and inside this run we write the code that we want to get executed on running a thread so it is having the code which is to be executed in parallel to the main program so this is how we do so we have to override this public void run and the code that we want to execute in parallel is written in this run method in the above code we are first inheriting the thread class and then overriding the run method the code you want to execute on the threads execution goes inside the run method but remember my dear friends the return type of this method is void and its access modifier is public let us see an example of it so here is the class my thread that extends thread and we are overriding the public void run and inside this run what is there is there is integer i equal to 0 while i less than 40 system dot out dot println my thread is running and i plus plus so i plus plus will become one and again the condition is true so this loop will execute 40 times and this statement my thread is running will be printed 40 times in parallel in order to execute the thread the start method is used so as i have already said that run method is not called directly we don't call run method but what we do is we call the start method that is there inside the thread class and that start method will call the run putting it into a separate thread and executing it parallelly the start method is called on the object of my thread class it automatically calls the run method and a new stack is provided to the thread so here is the example so we have this public void run and what we are interested in calling this run so how it is done so there is this public class thread demo in that we have public static void main my thread t1 so my thread is this class which is extending thread class so obviously t1 is an object of thread class equal to new my thread and then we call t1 dot start so when we call t1 dot start it takes some path and executes this run if we write here t1 dot run then it will throw an error because we cannot call this run directly using the object but it is 
executed or it is called through the start method so when it is done what will happen is this will get executed and this statement my thread is running will be printed 40 times so output of this program will be my thread is running this line this statement is printed 40 times so that's how you easily create threads by extending a thread class in java so i hope that this is very much clear my dear friends so we have seen first method of creating a thread that is by extending the thread class and we have said that there are two ways so the next way that is implementing the runnable interface which we are going to see in the next video so i hope you are learning java programming very good thank you for watching this video stay tuned for more videos on java programming on the channel engineering funda thank you my dear friends